Hello there, and welcome back to the channel and another Stargate video. Continuing my Stargate series as I am really got a thing for Stargate right now. And in this episode we are looking at the Goa'uld symbiote, which was prolific throughout Stargate SG-1 and did appear in Stargate Atlantis as well as some of the main antagonists of the Tauri and pretty much everybody else in the Milky Way galaxy. Before we get started, please like, share, subscribe and comment down below if you like this video. And tell me what you think about Stargate. Me personally, it's one of my favourite science fiction franchises. And you know what, I've not actually seen Stargate Origins, but I really, really want to. And I am hoping that the new series I've heard about that may be coming, comes. Because I would love me some more Stargate. Even Stargate Universe, which I think was very underrated. Anyway, with that said, let's get into the video on the Goa'uld symbiote itself. The Goa'uld symbiote is a parasitical reptilian serpentine creature which takes over a host body, taking control of their mind and their central nervous system in order to control the body. It can act, talk, walk, sound and behave like its original host as it has access to their personality, their memories and can usually effectively mimic them. The Goa'uld, the presence of a Goa'uld can be detected in the body not just through traces of Naquidor, as this is not a natural byproduct of the Goa'uld blending, but by certain visual cues such as glowing eyes, heightened strength and regenerative abilities, as well as a change in vocal patterns. Although the Goa'uld don't have to talk this way, it seems to be a, a conscious choice on their part, or simply a side effect of the blending. They can force themselves to speak in the natural voice of the host. The symbiotes originally originate from the planet of P3X888, and this planet is also home to another primitive species known as the Unas, another reptilian but humanoid species of, who are sentient but of less intelligence than the Goa'uld, but of physically greater capability. Symbiotes are a colonial style species, with a queen and drones birthed from the queen. They are typically matured in the pouch of a Jafar, but they can mature naturally in the wild as long as there is adequate supplies of water for them to live in, and they will feed on small marine crustaceans or fish until they reach maturity, at which point they will attempt to take a host. If a symbiote attempts to take a host before maturity, the blending will either not be successful or they will not be able to permanently take control of the host and will have to rest for periods of time inside the body, meaning that the host regains their self-control while the symbiote has to rest. The reason that they're stored inside of a Jafar for maturity is to acclimate them more to the human biology, as of course humans to them are a very alien species, whereas the Unas evolved on their original homeworld, humans did not. So humans are not as compatible as the original Unas, but the Unas have also evolved defenses against them. The Unas also breed in much smaller numbers, which keeps the Goa'uld population more under control, whereas humans reproduce more rapidly and in larger numbers, although they possibly don't live as long. Although when blended with a symbiote, a human will live for centuries, possibly millennia, with artificial technological assistance such as that of the sarcophagi. An active queen can spawn literally thousands of symbiotes in a relatively short space of time. Although it does take years for these symbiotes to mature, perhaps at least five years, probably longer in some cases, depending on the availability of food and how strong the symbiote is. The symbiotes are generally gender neutral, aside from the queens who do require, if they are going to take a host, a reproductively capable female host of whatever species they're planning to, their young to infest. They can selectively pass on genetic memory to their offspring as well, choosing how intelligent and how much information their offspring actually have, demonstrated by the Cull warriors produced by certain Goa'uld queens that have, although all the intelligence of a Goa'uld, but absolutely no personality. Or, as the Tok'ra queen Ajiria managed to do, she created completely blank drones that had no intelligence and no personality of any kind, other than basically instinctually driven to take a host, but then they become basically a coma patient once taken. Others, such as Hathor, will produce fully self-aware drones, which are fully fleshed out people with all the intelligence and knowledge of the Goa'uld that have come before them, along with all the personality quirks that are typical to a Goa'uld. When a Goa'uld takes over a host body, they will often claim that the host dies during this conversion, but it's not true. The host will simply suffer torment and psychological suppression from the symbiote. 
if the symbiote is ever killed or removed, assuming it doesn't kill the host by releasing the toxin into the bloodstream that they tend to do when they die, the host will recover physically, but psychologically, depending on how long they were a host for, the scars could be permanent and may not be able to recover from the effects of the blending. However, a more gentle blending is possible, although not preferred by the Goa'ul, but some ghouls, known as the Tok'ra, do occasionally, or rather in the Tok'ra's case, always blend in a way that allows the host to maintain control when the symbiote isn't. The sim this is not a two-way street. The symbiote can choose to completely control the host and the host has no say over it. If the host wants to surface their personality, the symbiote has to deliberately detach itself and allow the host to speak and operate independently. This is a blending that is more gentle and more natural for a host <clears throat> and for the symbiote in general, but is not something that's preferred by the Goa'uld, as the Goa'uld don't want to share the body, they want to be in charge. Whereas the Tok'ra are more inclined, as I say, to allow such a melding of minds, because they don't want slavery or conquest, they are against the concept of the Goa'uld Empire in, an, in principle, built philosophically and ideologically, completely opposed to everything that it stands for. But they have always been fewer in numbers, there was only one Tok'ra queen, and were probably thousands of Goa'uld queens, including ones still producing them on their original homeworld, which the Goa'uld had, had left behind long ago. The preferred hosts for the Goa'uld were humans, but they could take other species, notably again the Unas, but that's not to say they couldn't use a species such as the Serican or others, as long as they were compatible in some way to the symbiote, although it's not known if they could use a species like the Wraith because of their powerful psychic abilities, but they are relatively close to humans, so it is possible. So there we have the basic anatomy of the Goa'uld symbiote, a rather nasty, horrible little parasite that takes over its host, and you live for hundreds if not thousands of years in torment, being basically a meat puppet for an alien parasite, wrapped around your brain stem and it little tendrils into your brain. Not pleasant. Doesn't sound nice at all. Luckily the Goa'uld were defeated, and their numbers greatly reduced. The Goa'uld as a culture were generally rather vile, egomaniacal and warlike, although that is not to say that all Goa'ulds were like that, just the majority of the ones in charge seemed to be. They were also a cannibalistic species with a ceremony that the system lords used to in participate in where every night at one of the council meetings they would eat a live symbiote removed from a vat where they would be stored and each of the goal system lords would take one and, you, and consume it. This ritualistic cannibalism is unique to the Goa world. Despite everything, for the host there are actually some benefits, albeit meagre ones, although they are emphasised more if you're blended with a Tok'ra symbiote rather than a Goa world. The benefits can be, of course, increased intelligence, longer life, better physical health, as the symbiote has a much more advanced immune system than a mere human, meaning that you don't really get sick, or not very often. The symbiote's powerful regenerative abilities can do things like cure cancer and other terminal diseases and infections amongst humans. They also have massively enhanced healing, meaning they can knit bones in days, they can they don't you won't really scar, or it'd have to be a pretty severe injury for you to do so. Basically, the symbiote gives you increased vitality, health, and long life. But it comes at the cost of your freedom. Now, unless you're blended with the Tok'ra, that's probably an unacceptable price to pay. Also, if a Goa'uld, particularly two Goa'ulds, were to allow their hosts to, where they were to mate and produce a child, this is known as a harsesis, and because of the Goa'uld's tendency to pass on genetic memory, and plus with the blending process, it's a little more two-way than the Goa'uld would like you to believe. Much of the Goa'uld's genetics enter into the human body, and this is passed on genetically if they've been hosts for long enough particularly. The Harsesis child will then inherit knowledge from the two parent Goa'ulds. Now as drones don't seem to have the ability to selectively pass on memory like the queens can, a Harsesis child will be born with all the collective knowledge of the Goa'uld parents. This is very dangerous and is outlawed by the Goa'uld, because for obvious reasons you'll be given a species that you consider to be lesser than yourselves and is meant to be nothing but a host to you and slaves, all of your knowledge, and that will be very, very dangerous. 
Now, with all that said, that is the Goa'uld as a species, biologically, without all the commentary on their culture, which is... Yeah. If you're a fan of Stargate, let me know. Uh, the Goa'uld, again, the Goa'uld are my favourite villains from the whole franchise. And I mean the whole franchise, all three different installments of Stargate. They're certainly my favourite. They were the most colourful, the most interesting, particularly Baal. And very sad to hear about the passing of the actor who played him, uh, Cliff Simon. And it's he was my favourite villain in the whole of the Stargate franchise. Second, though, the, the only close one after him would probably be Michael Kenmore from Atlantis. You know, Connor Trinier, another fantastic actor. Getting off track. May have to do a video on him, actually. Anyway... Like, share, subscribe, and comment down below if you made it all the way to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye.